Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to learn how to set up Detectron 2 and use it for object detection, image segmentation, semantic segmentation, panoptic segmentation, key point detection and more. This is going to be a complete guide for Detectron 2 on images and videos. So make sure to watch till the end. So let's get started. First of all, we need to set up Detectron 2. For that, let's start by creating a virtual environment. I am using Anaconda, so in Anaconda prompt, type conda create minus n detectron underscore env and python is going to be version 3.8. Press y when prompted and wait for it to finish. Once that is done, activate that environment with conda activate detectron2 underscore env or whatever the name you have given to your virtual environment. We can see it over here that this environment is activated. Now we need to install PyTorch and CUDA toolkit. So type the command conda install PyTorch torch vision torch audio CUDA toolkit equals 11.0 minus C PyTorch. I'll put this command in the description below. So you just need to copy that command and paste it in your Anaconda prompt. Press Y when prompted and wait for it to finish. Once it is done, we will also be installing Cython because that is required to run Detectron 2. So install it using command pip install Cython. Okay, so now we are ready to clone Detectron to GitHub repository. We can issue the command git clone and then path to the GitHub repository. And we can see that it is being downloaded on our hard drive. A new folder called Detectron2 is created. Once cloning is done, go to this newly downloaded Detectron2 folder and type command pip install minus e and hit enter. Detectron2 setup will take care of all the dependencies required to run it. After that, we also need OpenCV, so install it using pip install OpenCV Python and the latest available version would be installed. Once all the dependencies are installed, we are ready to code our program for object detection, image segmentation, semantic segmentation, and panoptic segmentation. So let's open up our favorite IDE. I am using VS Code. I'll create two files, detector.py and main.py inside the same folder where I downloaded the Detectron2 repository. Let's import the modules from Detectron that we require. From Detectron2 engine, we need default predictor. From Detectron2 config, we need get CFG. And from Detectron2 data, we need metadata catalog. From Detectron2 utils, we need visualizer and we also need to import color mode. Finally, from Detectron2, we need to import model zoo so that we can download all the models that are available with Detectron2. To read the images and videos, we need to import CV2 and also NumPy. Now we are ready to implement Detector class. Let's define the init method of the Detector class. We need to initialize getCFG class, which we will be using to get configuration and model files from Detectron to Model Zoo. The models for Detectron has two parts, the configuration file and its corresponding weights checkpoint. And that's where we define if we want to do object detection or semantic segmentation. Here I am mentioning the name of an object detection model, so the object detection would be performed now how do i know the name i would be explaining that later in the video so let's continue our coding we also need to define the threshold for the detections if we have cuda gpu we can enable cuda for faster inferencing time if you do not have a gpu you can just simply use cpu here once this configuration is done we need to pass it to default predictor. 
Now with this configuration, we are ready to do object detection on images and videos. Let's first define a method for images. This method takes image path as input and reads the image using OpenCV. Next, we need to pass this image to the predictor and get predictions. Once we have the predictions, we will initialize the visualizer with this input image. We also have option to set the color mode, which for now I am using black and white. With that, the visualizer is ready and all that is left is to draw the predictions on the input image using this visualizer. Once we have the output, we can show it on the screen using OpenCV I'm show method. That's the simple object detection code implemented in just 30 lines. Now let's come back to the main file and import everything from detector file that we just created. Let's initialize detector class and call on image method by giving the path to the image that we want to use for object detection. CFG not defined error. Oh, uh, that should be self.cfg. There we go. Let's run the main file again. There we have it. The results of object detection with 100% confidence are shown here. Let's try a couple of other images. There it is. So that's working great. Now we also need to define a way to select between object detection, semantic segmentation or instance segmentation, etc. So let's change our class a little bit and introduce a parameter called model type. I'm going to call this one OD, which stands for object detection. So if I mention model type OD, these configuration and wake files should be loaded. But if I input IS, which stands for instance segmentation, then some other model should be loaded. Let's mention here that it's instance segmentation and this one is object detection. Let's copy these two lines and paste here. Now we need to change the configuration file and its corresponding model weights file names. First change this detection to instance segmentation and then change the model file names to mask rcnn which is well known instance segmentation model again just use these names as it is for now i will explain all available model names in a moment let's now come back to the main file this time we need to define the parameter model type as well you can try od that is object detection but let's do it for is that is instance segmentation and there we have it the result of instance segmentation where each object is treated as a separate instance and we can see that all sheeps have different colors as opposed to semantic segmentation where each sheep would have same color because it is the same object we can also play with color modes of visualizer here we can change it to segmentation and let's see how it changes the results now we have nice colors for our segmentation map we can also change it to image and we'll have a different visualization now let's change the model to third task that is key point detection i'm gonna call this one kp for short and we do the copy paste of the same two lines once again this time model type would be kp so if we input this parameter key point detection model should be loaded let's change this to key points and the model file name is key points rcnn now let's run key points detection on the same image and here we have the key points for the person only because that's what the model is trained on in Detectron 2, the support for Elvis instance segmentation is also included. This model is trained on this huge Elvis instance segmentation dataset of rare categories. Let's use Elvis for instance segmentation and see how it performs. 
so you know what we are gonna do we're going to copy the same two lines and change this else if condition to elvis and then also the name of cfg and model weights files this is going to be elvis v 0.5 instance segmentation and the model is mask rcnn okay so it segments out the sheep and dog but with a lower confidence than mask rcnn trained on ms coco so what's elvis good at let's use some other image here you can see it is able to segment out chairs flowers cushion blanket etc let's compare it with instant segmentation this detects other categories in the scene such as potted plant and bottle so you have the option of whichever model you want to use so elvis is basically trained on some rare categories on which you would not be able to find some other data sets or models so you have option to use either of these now let's talk about panoptic segmentation so that means to segment out the whole scene instead of just a couple of categories so you guessed it we are gonna copy the same two lines change this else if condition to ps which stands for panoptic segmentation this is going to be coco panoptic segmentation and the file name is panoptic fpn this time we also need to make changes to the visualizer because for panoptic segmentation they use different visualizer configurations so let's first declare a class-wide variable for model type so that we are able to access it anywhere within the class so the previous visualizer should be used whenever we are not using panoptic segmentation and this one would be used when we are using panoptic segmentation so we are going to use this new predictor and visualizer. This time we will draw panoptic segmentation predictions instead of instance predictions. And that's it. Let's run the model now. Here we have it. Complete scene is segmented with walls, light, ceiling, floor, etc. So let's run it on our previous image and there we have it. This time grass is also segmented out. So now the final thing that is left is to run all of these models on videos. And that's very easy. We can define another method called on video, which will take video path as input. Then we open this video. If the video cannot be opened, we return with an error. Otherwise we capture one frame from the video and while the frame is successfully captured we can just do the same inferencing and visualizations as we did on images so just copy the same code from above and paste here but we also need to define a key press q to quit the inferencing anytime we want to and then we capture the next image Okay, so that's it. I have this street video. Let's run object detection on this video. Here are the results. And we can also do panoptic segmentation or instant segmentation. And here we have it. Now, finally, let me tell you how I knew the names of all the models. So you can go to the model zoo of Detectron 2. And here you will find all the models available for each task. For example, these are the models available for key point detection. Then there are file sizes and the performance measures given for each model. So use whichever you like. For instance, if I want to use the last one for object detection, I can just copy the link and paste in my code. So I'm only interested in this last part. So just remove everything before this Coco detection and just paste the remaining path for both configuration files and model checkpoint file. It will download the model automatically from model zoo and here are the results for this newly downloaded model. 
So you can do this with any model available at Detectron 2 Model Zoo, which might be updated after this video is uploaded. So make sure to check that out. The links are in the description below. With that, I'm done with today's video. In our next video, we will learn how we can use Detectron 2 on Google Colab and then how we can train Detectron 2 on our custom dataset. I will see you in the next one.